What's up guys? This is the one, two, this is the fourth time I am attempting to film this video. So let's get started. Okay, so obviously this is my September wrap up. I am a little late. I do understand that, but I've been busy. I have, so get to it. There's gonna be, there's 21 books here, which is like one of the reasons why I was like, eh, do I, do I want to film this for the fourth time? Um, but we're just gonna go for it. Some of these books are forgettable, so I'm not gonna remember everything in clarity, but we're just gonna, we're, we're gonna try. So in September, I read 21 books and the total pages were 9,000. And 13 pages. Most of my reading was emotional, dark, and mysterious. And 65% was medium paced, 20 was slow, and 15 was fast. 24% were over 500 pages, 19 were under 300, and 57 were between 3 and 500. I mostly read horror, romance, fantasy, contemporary. So my lowest rated book for September was two stars, and then obviously going up to five stars, and my average rating was 3.76 stars. So we are gonna start with the books that I gave two stars. The first one is Not Your Average Hot Guy. This is about our main character who, don't remember her name, really not important, her family owns a escape room. So one day her mom is going on a business trip and she leaves her daughter to watch after the escape room. And these group of people book her like satanic escape room, but they are part of an occult. So they come wearing like, you know, cloaks and masks and she doesn't really think anything of it. So first red flag. In the room, she has an artifact that she doesn't know is real. She got it at like a yard sale, but the occult group knows that it's a real deal. So they go in there to summon Satan. Well, not, not really Satan, but to summon Satan's right-hand man. But instead of summoning the right-hand man, they summoned Lucifer's son, Luke. So that's how these two characters are introduced. It's, you know, they, they like each other. They like each other a lot. And it just wasn't good. I didn't think it was going to be a great book, but I at least thought that it was going to be entertaining. And it wasn't. It was just cringy and I didn't like it. I, no, no thanks. And then the next two star book we have is Prince of Thorns. This is part of a series. This is basically about, I don't even remember this man's name. Oh, Jorg. Okay, well that, I mean, even that name sounds like he's an asshole, right? And that's what it is. It's basically about this kid named Jorg and he is this, anti-hero but he's just an asshole literally like the first couple chapters of this book he's just raping women he's he's just he's raping them for fun and it's like he doesn't have like a good like villain backstory he's not he's just an asshole he's he's an asshole so didn't like this book two stars i am not going to continue on with the series, there's just really no point. Okay, and then we have one 2.5 star, and that is Such a Pretty Smile. So this is about a mother and a daughter. We have dual POVs, but we're also jumping timelines with the mom. And basically there's this serial killer going around killing girls that he deems are not good girls. So the mom's really protective of the daughter and the daughter is hanging out with some kids, but the daughter starts like hallucinating and like hearing voices. So we're kind of like exploring that and then learning more about the mom. Um, it just, it, it, it was okay. I, I didn't, I didn't really like it. And I can't tell you exactly why I didn't like it because then that would be a spoiler. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. It, it, it was okay. Next up the three star categories, which I have a lot of three star. Three star for me is just kind of middle of the road, like don't hate it, don't love it, it's just kind of meh. The first one is Suspicious Minds. This is part of like the Stranger Things books and this is from Eleven's mom's perspective, Terry. 
and how she got introduced to Dr. Brenner and more about what's going on in the lab with all of the testing and all that stuff. So I like that aspect of it, but for me, I like the side characters more than I liked Eleven, like learning about Eleven's mom. And like the Stranger Things vibes were in here for sure, which I really liked, but it was just, it, it, it was okay. It, it was fine, you know. And then next we have the Black Tongue Thief. This is about a kid who has like, I don't know, he's like a bandit, right? He like steals, he's, he's a thief. And one day he picks a target to steal from and it is, he basically picked the wrong person because the person he picked is the handmaiden of the goddess of death. So in this book, they kind of like make a deal and they're trying to help each other out achieve their personal goals or whatever. So, I mean, it was just okay. It was, I mean, it was humorous. I liked the writing, but overall it just, it wasn't really memorable. So that's why it is a three stars. And then we have Every Summer After. This is a contemporary romance book. I mean, I, I still think about this book, not because I liked it. I mean, I, Okay, so it is basically about this girl. Her family buys a like summer house and the neighbors, they start becoming friends. So our main character, I forgot what her name is. It's like Perry or something. Percy, I think it's Percy. So she befriends the neighbor's sons and they get really close and feelings start to develop. So this is kind of like childhood lovers but then, you know, we're going back between the past and the present and those two, they're not really friends anymore. So we know that something big happened, but we don't know what. So we're putting the pieces together throughout the book and like the big reveal is just, no, no. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about spoilers. If you have read the book, watch on. If you have not, but want to, please skip. Um, or if you don't want to read the book and you just want to know the spoilers, then <laughs> continue watching. Um, I will put an emoji up here and when the emoji is gone, then the video is safe to watch. But basically like the big reveal at the end was that our main character, Percy, had cheated on the neighbor boy that she was dating with his brother. So she slept with his brother. And then like years later they meet up because the neighbor boy's mom dies and like she kind of like puts everything out on the table because they still have feelings for each other. And he's just like, yeah, I know, but I forgive you and I wanna be with you. I was like, boy, no. No, I don't buy it and that's gross. I wouldn't wanna be Eskimo bros with with if I if I was him if I was a, a dude I wouldn't want to be Eskimo bros with my brother. No No, so I gave it three stars. I did like learning about the people But it was just that ending that I was like what the fuck? And then the last three star book that I rated is Four Aunties and a Wedding. So this is the sequel to Dial A for Aunties. I really love Dial A for Aunties. It's like one of my favorite reads of the year. It is so funny. If you have not read it, I highly recommend it, but I would definitely not read the, the sequel. It's just, it's, this book tried too hard to recreate what happened in the first book. It was just like over the top ridiculous. I had like second hand embarrassment, but the only thing that I liked <laughs> about this reading experience is that I read it with my friend Nat, who is here on booktube. I will link her channel down below. You should definitely check her out. I love watching her videos, but we buddy read this together and we were both like, <laughs> make it stop. It was just, it was way too much. And like the love interest wasn't really even mentioned in the book. No, I don't like it. I, I did not like it. I was, I was not a fan, unfortunately. Now we're going on to the 3.5 star, which I only gave one book. And that one book is Things We Do in the Dark by Jennifer Hillier. You guys know I love Jenny Hillier. I 
absolutely love her. I think she's a fantastic author. One of my favorite books is written by her, The Butcher. Talked about that a bajillion times. But Things We Do in the Dark is following this girl who is married to like a retired comedian and everyone thinks that she married him for the money, that they're not really in love. And our main character is kind of running away from her past when she is found holding like a straight razor and her husband's dead on the floor, like right by her and the police walk in. So she's, you know, people think that, oh, she killed her husband. She wants that life insurance, you know? So she's trying to kind of clear her name, but she doesn't want her past to catch up to her and people to know about her past and someone from her past is threatening to expose her. So we're trying to find out what what secrets, all that stuff. So for me, there wasn't really any shocking plot twist. I kind of saw the plot twist coming and I guess I, I just wanted a little bit more. Not saying that this book sucked because I do feel like this is accessible for people who don't really read thriller books, you know? I think that they would really like it, but from the books that I have read from Jennifer Hillier, this is on like the lower end that I would rate it. Still a good time, but wasn't my favorite. It was just okay. Moving now to 3.75 stars, which I have two books in here. <laughs> and the first one I'm going to talk about is Yerba Buena. So this is marketed as a like sapphic romance and I would not, I would not say that. No, I would say this is more of a literary fiction. We are following these two girls from when they're 16 into when they're adults and they don't know each other when they're younger but when they're older their paths kind of cross. So that was cool to read. These two kids they basically have a lot going on while they're growing up. One of them runs away, the other one has a lot of like familial stuff going on and it's sad to read like these girls have gone through a lot of trauma but i didn't get the closure that i wanted from the ending but i do like i have to say like i do really love nina lacour's writing i think she's a fantastic writer i absolutely love reading her books she just has such a way with words. That feels so stupid to say, but it's true. I really like how she writes. So it was, yeah, it, it was okay. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. I liked it. I'm gonna remember reading this book. I guess I just wanted more from the ending. And then this might be a shock to some people and I feel bad saying it, <laughs> but the last book that I rated 3.75 stars is Babel by R.F. Kuang. This book is basically about translation, but there's a magical element to it. This is taking place in Oxford in the 1800s. And there's just a lot of themes in here, heavy themes of racism and just the book makes you think. And I really love that about this book. But for me, I was probably like 250 pages in and I was ready to DNF because most of this book is just, if it's just like lecture notes, lecture notes about language. And frankly, I didn't care. I, I, I didn't really care. I'm a person that I'm very like, just give it to me straight, straight to the point kind of thing. And like, for me, I just wanted to know how the magic worked, the world that we were in, and the storyline. I didn't necessarily care about like the origins of certain words. I could care less. My friend Bex, we read it together. Also, I will link her channel down below. And she really liked like the, the lecture note parts. She was, you know, annotating it like crazy. She really enjoyed that. So I'm, I feel like I'm kind of in the minority in that aspect of it. But because I hated the beginning so much, I couldn't, I couldn't give it five stars and four stars felt a little bit too generous. I do really like her writing style. I liked the story, but there were just certain things that I wasn't too crazy about. I wasn't too crazy about the ending. Um, so it kind of just sits at a 3.75 for me. Okay, now we're into the four star category. And the first one is the stationary shop. So this is taking place in Tehran in 1953. Three. And there's this man who owns a stationery shop. Also, there's like a lot of political stuff going on at the time So that was interesting to read but it's about this man Mr. Farkery and he owns the stationery shop and our main character She loves going to it. It's kind of like 
her oasis, you know? And she meets a boy at the stationery shop and they become romantically involved. There's just a lot of drama <laughs> going into it. But the book starts off with our main character and she is, you know, in her 70s and she is visiting her boy lover at a nursing home. But we don't know what happened and why they're not together. So we're getting like these flashbacks and learning about what happened and why they are not together. And I thought it was sweet. I thought it was cute. I enjoyed my read. I would recommend it. I love it when people love books and like stationary things in books that I'm reading. So obviously that's a plus. The next book that I rated four stars is Bear Town by Frederick Bachman. I'm kind of like contemplating my rating right now. I think I might put that in like 3.75 if I'm being honest. But this is basically about a hockey town and we're learning about all of the people who live in this town. One thing that shocked me and that I don't hear people saying anything about this book when they review it is that uh, trigger warnings for rape because I did not know this and I was not expecting it and I would have liked to be warned <laughs> is all I'm gonna say. Um, but there's heavy themes of rape in here. You know, women not really mattering. It's about hockey and it's about the men. Frederick Bachman, he writes people like characters so well that I did really enjoy the writing style. Once I got over like all of like the hockey bullshit that I, I don't care about and we learned about the characters, I really did like the book. And then I was kind of like punched in the face and kicked in the gut with the whole rape situation. So just fair warning, if you wanna read this book, just know that that is like a big theme in this book because I had no idea. And then the last book that I rated four stars, which is a surprise, is a book by Colleen Hoover. And that book is Without Merit. I picked this up because I felt like I just needed like a fast paced, like accessible read that I didn't have to think too much of. And uh, that's what I got with this. It gave me what I wanted. Um, this is also, this has a bunch of trigger warnings, so beware if you want to read this book. This is basically about like a dysfunctional family and learning about their secrets. Yeah, trigger warnings for suicide, trigger warnings for a shitload of stuff. Um, but I did enjoy the read. I don't know, I like reading about dysfunctional families, so yeah, I mean, I liked it. Uh, it's, you know, it's a Colleen Hoover book. It's not amazing, but it's not like the worst thing that I've read, so. Okay, moving on to 4.5 stars, we are almost done, and that is Return of the King, which is the third book in Lord of the Rings. I love it. I am so glad that I read it. I didn't physically read it, but I listened to the audiobooks, and I would highly, highly recommend the audiobooks because the audiobooks are freaking fantastic. They are so good. Um, but I really did enjoy this. I have not watched the third movie yet. Maybe I'll go do that soon after, you know, spooky season and all that stuff. Then we have 4.75 and that is Dreams of the Dying. This takes place in a in the world of like Skyrim, which I didn't know. Um, so that's pretty cool, but <laughs> It, it was a thick book, but it was good. I I really liked it. It is, we're following this ex-mercenary and he's kind of going on this quest because he receives a letter requesting his services to help one of the leaders of like the um, town or whatever um, because he's in a coma and they want our main character, Jesper, to uh, try to help which, you know, it, it was cute. There were a lot of social themes, social commentary that I really loved reading and the characters, they were really like fleshed out and the body horror in this was fantastic also. I really liked that. And it was just, it was a fantastic book. I feel like if you really love like high fantasy books, but also like a little dark, a bit of horror thrown in there that you would really like this book. I thought it was fantastic. If he comes out with the second book, I'm, I'm gonna grab that ASAP. Now we are into the five star category. So the first book in the five star category is Clackety. This is a middle grade book, but it was so freaking cute. And I finally, I finally got my hands on it. It was the last copy at a Barnes and Noble somewhere in Florida. I don't even remember. I was with my sister and I was so happy to like hold it in my hands because I listened to the audiobook on Scribd. And I was like, this book is just, it's so cute. It is 
so adorable. It says this tells the story of a girl who must enter a world of ghosts, witches, and a monster to play a game with deadly consequences to rescue her aunt. So they live in Blight Manor, her and her aunt. Her aunt is like a medium of sorts and she helps the people in the town and there's like this kind of like warehouse thing that her aunt doesn't want our main character Evie to go into but then one day her aunt disappears and she's trying to find her aunt and she goes into that warehouse and she meets the clackety which is a creature who lives in the shadows this was it was just it was so cute it was so cute it was like it's adorable and i wanted to own it because i didn't want to forget about it or like years to pass and like i had this book in my head but i didn't know what the name was because I'm a psycho. I don't have kids yet. I probably won't have a child. Five years from now is probably when I'll start planning for that. But when that does happen, I will have all the books, all the spooky books that um, will be ready for when my kid is uh, ready to read them. Okay, next five star read is obviously Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. This book is an ode to Agatha Christie's And Then There Were None. I freaking love this book. It was so much fun. It, it was just, it was such a good time. It's like the perfect spooky season read because it, take, it takes place the night before Halloween and also the day of Halloween. Um, people are dying left and right. There are clues. The twist, I didn't mind. I, I know some people really hated the twist in the book, but I really, I, I didn't mind. I thought that it was, this book was like very well executed. I thought it was just so much fun and it gave me all the vibes that I wanted. So, uh, five stars for sure. The next five stars is The Weight of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson. I have it somewhere back there, but I don't, I, I don't feel like getting up. So this is kind of a retelling of Stephen King's Carrie. So this is about a girl who lives in like the middle of bumfuck nowhere. And like the school is still segregated, which the white people but um she's constantly being made fun of she the school is throwing their first non-segregated prom and she goes and you know people are making fun of her and then shit goes down and it's freaking amazing i love tiffany d jackson i really did like it and if you haven't checked it out i would highly recommend because it was it was just so good okay next five star is elric of melibene so this book came out like 15 years ago, but they started remaking like the covers of it and adding illustrations to it. And let me tell you, this book is fantastic. It is so funny. It, like this, it's just, it's, it's ridiculous. It's amazing. You go on, you know, like this epic fantasy adventure and it gave me everything that I've ever wanted, like in like a high fantasy world. So you're following the ruler of Melibene, Elric, his cousin wants the throne. So they're constantly like fighting and like dueling and all of this ridiculous stuff. And it's just, it's fantastic. I feel like if you love Lord of the Rings, you would love this book. Also, if you just love high fantasy and you want an adventure, this is the book for you. If you like humor, it's just, it's, it's fantastic. I love this book. Volume 2 and volume... So volume 2 is already out, which I need to get, and volume 3 is coming out soon. So, or it might already be out, but um, definitely check it out because it's fantastic and I love it and I can't wait to finish the rest of the series. All right, so the last book that I read in September that I gave five stars is A Little Life. What? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, did it, I mean, I, maybe I could dock off stars because this book didn't make me cry, but maybe I also read it at the wrong time because I was stressed with moving and, um, yeah, I, I couldn't make myself cry and this book didn't make me cry, but the writing is so good and the way that Hanya Yanagahara writes these characters, they feel real. I feel like like I knew these people and like you want the best for them when you know when things are going great you're happy for them when things are going sad like you feel it in your gut. I really connected to our main character Jude. This book says that like it follows four college friends 
you know, we're going from like when they're 20 to when they're like in their 60s. So we're, we're following them throughout their adult life. And I went into it thinking that we were going to get like four different perspectives, but mainly the perspective that we get and the story is revolving around the one friend named Jude. He's gone through a lot of trauma in his life and he's just, he's, he's just trying to survive, man. Yeah, it was just, it was, it was a really great book. I would reread it and re-annotate it again. I, it was just, it was really good. A bunch of trigger warnings though, literally trigger warnings for everything. If a situation happens, you're not just gonna get like a brief explanation of what trauma has happened. You are going to get detail, descriptions of what is happening to these characters. Um, so it's not for the faint of heart, a bunch of trigger warnings. So beware, but I really did like the book. Yeah, I thought it was great. So <laughs> that is all. I have to say this is going to be a long video and it's going to be a pain in the asshole to uh, edit, but I will do it for you guys. I will. But that is all I have as of right now. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. It means a lot to me and it helps me out a lot. And please don't forget to comment down below because I love when people comment. Um, I like talking about books. <laughs> so don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I will see you guys on Friday. Take care.